which comes to our segment. Our segment today. What are we going to be talking about, Elder? Uh, what we're talking about today is a uh, campaign game. So the, 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 I think the overall theme of this, um, this round, right, mm-hmm. is um, how games have changed. Changes. Yeah. And one thing that we've seen change that definitely wasn't there when I entered the hobby is this, this idea of, of campaign games or games that change in the board game space. I think we're we're used to, I think we, we both have a background of, of role-playing games, right? Where we're mm-hmm. used to the idea of having a campaign where you have some elements and you get together from session to session and, and there's some persistence. Yes. Um, you know, several years ago, um, I remember the, um, the first announcement of, you know, legacy games. Yes. Um, and I think campaign games are kind of like an, an offshoot. It's an, it's an interesting kind of play between legacy and campaign and what those differences are. And we can get into that a little bit. But I, I think I wanted to talk more about campaign, uh, which means that it's, it's not a legacy game in the fact that um, – something necessarily seems persistent you don't write something on the board or something uh a a car changes so that that level of permanence but campaigns usually tend more towards story and this idea that it's the same basic underlying game but in this episode of the game or this session of the game there's some new element added some new mechanism some type of change that that makes the game um a little different and and hopefully a little more interesting than than the base game so to say uh so a legacy game is one in which the landscape of the game changes in fairly significant ways even the rules of the game change whereas in a campaign game the rules of the game largely remain the same but the circumstances with which you start each round of the game are changed based on previous rounds is that is that a fairly decent summation of of how you're separating those two terms um i i think again the the the, in the campaign game, it's more about there, there's some particular rule. Mm-hmm. So it's a mechanism change versus legacy is is a an element change. Like there seems to be this level of kind of, of permanence where, you know, again, like I, I think the most obvious example is there's a there's a space on the board on the, the main board that was one way when you started the game. And then there was a session of the game where it was permanently changed and it'll always be that way. Yeah. Um, every time you play the game afterwards, whereas in campaign games, it can be more fluid. Yeah. There, there is no permanent uh, element of the game, mm-hmm. but the, the rule or the mechanism may change. Now, just last week, we reviewed Glenmore 2 Chronicles. Uh, <laughs> where does the where does the term chronicle fit into your your thing? Is that more? Is is that to me? It seems like a sort of barely a campaign, like a little bit of variety, but not really, not really. It, it changes the way a game is played from one session to another without pretending to extend one story. Exactly. Yeah. There, there isn't in, in Glenmore, which I enjoy Glenmore too. Um, you know, there, it does have this element where you have these little boxes, right. For that particular campaign or episode of the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it might introduce some new cards or, or, um, a new meeple or a new, um, uh, kind of token to put on top of a a blank space. But again, it isn't permanent. You can, you know, you pull it out for that particular campaign and then you put it back in the box and then there's another box for another campaign. Um, and there's no there's no real story involved. Right. It does change the game. It may change your focus a little bit, mm-hmm. um, but it's basically the same game that you're playing. It's yeah. just it's yeah. just something to add. A, it's just a, something else to throw into the recipe that gives it a little little different flavor. Got it. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. So. Yeah. Campaign games. What's 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 your favorite campaign game? What's the what's the what for you ticks all the boxes for Elder's perfect idea of what a campaign should be? 
Um, well, I'm still I'm still exploring this place. I, I think I, I it's just a very interesting idea that I wanted to talk about because it is such a significant change, and I do like this kind of dynamic that's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and really, I think it's interesting to, you know, as we're doing kind of look at the difference between campaign and legacy. And I think there is some overlap. Yeah. Um, I think um, and I, I'm not sure how this lands in the in the, the definitions as we're Uh-oh. as we're trying to put them together. Are you going to say Maracaibo? Um, I'm sorry. Are you going to say Maracaibo? No, no, because I haven't. I actually haven't played the the campaigns. I only got to play the base game, but I would love to try those in Maracaibo. I was going to say underwater cities. Um, Interesting. Yeah, um, and and that's really more of a, a well. I guess that's really more of an expansion, right, than a campaign. So I don't know if that really classifies, but. Um, I mean, I would say that for for a campaign game to be a campaign, you'd have to have a sense of at the end of this game, the story stops here and the next game we start afterwards and things are changed because of that. I guess I guess to some extent the expansion is kind of like that a a little bit, but not uh, maybe not in in the in the strictest sense of of the word. Right. Yeah, I I don't think so. uh, I, I think probably Glimmore Two is definitely more of of a campaign, yeah. Uh, in, in the way that we're defining it, um, there was the other game that was the um, the next extension of the Oh My Goods. What is the New New Dale? Yes, yeah, Expedition to New Dale. Yeah, New Dale. That's I think that definitely fits in the in the campaign. Um, you know, definition, I think, as we're defining it. Yeah, I, I think, uh, listen, there are dungeon crawls have campaign games up the wazoo, right? Because they're yeah. they're basically mimicking Dungeons and Dragons, which is a campaign game. That's what the whole game is about. Right. Um, it's about telling extended, extended stories. So Gloomhaven, Tainted Grail, Kingdom Death Monster, Too Many Bones... All of those games are sort of built around that, but those aren't exactly the kind of games that, that you and I play too often. Right. So what we're looking at is we're looking at a space in which each game is its own thing, and now what if you add in those elements, which I think is 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 really interesting to me. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with that one. Um, I, I think, did you ever play Above and Below or Near and Far? Um... I think I did, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I know I've played at least one of those games, if not both of them. But it's been a it's been a minute. Yeah, Ryan Lockett uh, designed them, and they're kind of they have uh, storybooks that go with them. So when you choose, you have workers. You're going to place those workers. You're going to choose actions to take. There is a sort of press your luck aspect in which when I go down to explore, I'm going to turn to page 59 and look at you know read that entry and then in that entry it's going to say do you want to you know uh, explore that deep dark place where the bones are coming from or do you want to grab what little you can find here and get the heck out of there right and Mm -hmm. it gives you an idea of what metric is going to be tested by that and if i have done a good job of collecting the right kinds of resources. I'm like, oh, well, you know what? I, I seem to be really loaded for bear in that category. I'm going to press my luck and go for the for the bigger thing. Um, they tell a, a story uh, that is kind of interesting. And the campaign aspect for that is that Above and Below is a sequel to Near and Far, not just in that it shares a lot of the same mechanisms, but it's literally a story of the same people that, in near and far kind of get destroyed and driven out and in above and below they're sort of trying to rebuild and uh, and start over again kind of, mm-hmm. which, which i thought was kind of interesting it's just it's it does a good job of um bringing story more to the forefront of a game that is otherwise a a euro game in which you know story story and theme kind of take second billing to some extent mm-hmm. yeah right so yes Yes. And, and again, I think I, I don't think I've seen I, I think maybe the reason part of the reason why I don't have a favorite yet, besides, you know, I haven't 
played as many of these games as I think I, I like so far. I'm very intrigued and interested because it is, I think, a relatively new thing. Um, and it does take some level of commitment, right? Like, oh, yeah. In, in a, um, a space where I think a lot of times, you know, like you said, we do like to play the, the new hotness a lot of times, even though, you know, again, I like to binge game. Um, but getting everybody to agree to play the same campaign game, <laughs> you know, from from week to week over any uh, amount of time, um, take some some coordination and some commitment, and some planning. Right. Um, I just started um, a charter stone um, online, which we uh, have agreed to play on on Tuesday nights. Right. And we've gotten, I think, maybe two or three um, uh, games in. Um, and I, and I, I don't know where this falls. I kind of feel like there is some, I think it, maybe it is a little bit more legacy than campaign, although yeah. it does try to have a story element. I, I the, think, well, uh, but, but yeah, but legacy can definitely have uh, 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 story elements, right? Betrayal Legacy right. is very much a story game. It's Betrayal on the House on the Hill, so it's a classic story construction, whereas yeah. Seafall and Pandemic Legacy are a little lighter on the story. But but even so, Pandemic Legacy in comparison to Pandemic is has tons more story, right? Yeah. Yeah, I th- I think Charterstone definitely is is a is a legacy game even if are you ripping cards up and and throwing them out in that one I can't remember. Um I've only played it online, so <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what the physical <laughs> Uh, aspects are there's definitely new there's like these these kind of loot boxes that you get during the game where yeah. you're getting new cards that that don't don't only affect you but also open up things to the other um, players i think that it's very heavily a worker placement game where you're collecting resources and and um kind of um transforming resources into other things mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in the game um there is a persistent scoring um element so that um you know, you're, you're winning not just the individual uh, sessions or games, but there's there's an overall um, scoring system. So you 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 like again. I've heard people say that they they won several um, individual sessions, but they wound up wound up losing the entire campaign. Yeah, you know? that's that's very much a legacy type type experience right. to some extent. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I, I, just an aside. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So when I'm playing games with my family, they yeah. they consider me to be a um, how would I put this? Not the neatest person in general, but okay. amazingly OCD about games. Yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, hey, why are you bending that card? Right. Why are you doing? Why are you doing that? What are you doing? Did, did we lose a piece? I just found a piece under the, you know, I, I found a piece next to the carpet right by the thing. Why didn't somebody grab this and put this away, right? Because otherwise the game's not playable and then all of a sudden I got to buy a new copy and blah, blah, blah. Right. Playing Pandemic Legacy with the kids, their favorite thing about it is when a card is to be removed from the game forever and never seen again. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like, what would you prefer to do? Would you prefer to rip it up right in front of my eyes or should we go out on the balcony and we can set it aflame? And they're like, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, and okay, just cross that out on your sheet and you tape this over the rule book and change the rules and, and put stickers on the board that are going to totally mar the board. And they're like, that's the most amazing thing ever. Oh my God. I can do illegally. I can do this right in front of my dad. It's amazing. There, there really is kind of a joy to the changing dynamic of a of a legacy game that that it implies a certain freedom, you know that that every other game that you've ever played, these are the rules and these will always be the rules and we shall not break the rules. And now all of a sudden you're breaking the rules, you're breaking components, you're throwing things out, you're adding things in, and and uh, there there is uh, for me as well. A, a certain freedom and joy and freshness to that experience. Yeah. And, and for me, it's like, I, I think I cringe a little bit. I think where in a lot of areas of my life, I'm not so OCD, but particularly around games, I think for, for similar reasons as you, right? Like you want to mm-hmm. keep the, the integrity of the game intact. And, and I think that's the, the case for a lot of, um, 
you know, really serious, uh, you know, board gamers. Um, we're, that's one of the things I love about our community. We're just so precious about making sure not to lo- lose pieces and, you know, find them and making sure they get back to the, you know, to the set if that happens to be the case. And, you know, oh, God forbid, spill a drink, <laughs> you know, or, or something or, or get, you know, food or something on the, the pieces or the elements of the game. We're, we're, we're very, very cautious about that. And there is something about these, you know, just scrawling something on the board or ripping something up. That's just like, Oh my God, what, what just happened there? Like, Oh, that's, that's part of this type of game. It's okay. Yeah. I still feel it in my gut. I'm like, Oh no. Yeah. Oh, it's so painful. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, card games, have had a LCGs have had a history of campaign game modes, right? Yeah. Arkham Horror card game, Thunderstone Quest, Marvel Champions. Um, they're sort of built, a lot of them are built these days around the idea of at, at the end of one scenario, your, you know, cards, you, the makeup of the deck is going to change in a certain way. So the game is never quite going to play the same again. And the, the cool thing about it is not just that the game isn't playing the same again, but it's playing uh, different because of the choices that you've made. Yeah. Matty talked yeah. about that a lot with Oath, right? Uh, which is not really a card game, but but uh, he, he talked about it that that uh, the winner of each round of Oath changes the way the board looks and changes the makeup of the cards in the, in the deck. And when you come across one of those new cards, you remember, ah, yes, when the when you know when the despot was dethroned and I took the throne. This is one of my innovations, right? That kind of thing. Yeah, and I think that's that's one of the the fun and and, and potentials of impossibilities of this type of game that I, that I don't think has really been. I think again, it's so new, and I think there's a lot that we can still get, and that and that designers can still bring to this. Uh, you know. A new genre of board games, these campaign games, is the um, the ability of the player to really have an impact on on the game state, you know, and and future plays of the game, and having you know, kind of putting your own um, you know spin or, or 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 imprint on how the game is played by the the choices that you make. Totally, totally. Yeah. I think that's a I think that's a big deal. Um, so <clears throat> Maracaibo for me was one of those things that it changed things, but it didn't feel much like it told a story. I don't think Glenn Moore really told much of a story either, in the sense that each mode sort of was its own game that focused on a different piece of of, of Scottish lore a little bit, but they didn't feel like they were connected in any way. So to me, those kinds of games are more sort of small ball changes to, you know, sort of brand extension, sort of how do we how do we play this more times without feeling samey, right? I think that's, yeah. which is valid, right? That's a valid thing yeah. to, to do. Yeah. But it doesn't really get into, you know, the possibilities of the form in terms of telling stories, whereas Arkham Horror, holy cow, the stories you can tell by uh, playing a campaign mode in that game, you know, the the relative balance between the the horrors out there and the investigators and so on and so forth um the game detective is an interesting one mm. um this was uh ignacio chevy uh, take on the detective genre and it's sort of set in present day um and the interesting thing about that is that it comes with five cases and they're interlocking case number one each, each one is its own case but you're uncovering a larger case that you're solving as you go, which is fascinating, even though the rules of the game don't change, right? The rules, mm-hmm. you start in the same situation in each scenario. Um, you do Some cards are going to come out of the game. Some cards are going to go into the game based on the things that you uncovered or did not uncover, the actions you took or didn't take in the previous mode. But that's it. You're just changing the deck. And by changing the deck and changing what you're starting with on the next round, you're sort of changing how you come into each case, which mm. to me is is a fairly elegant way of doing it. Um, 
You know what I mean? I think Oath and Detective both do a really good job of coming up with a way to get get you a game that plays a little bit differently, um, to make you feel like the decisions you made the last time you played are of consequence, which I think is a really big part of it, right? To, yeah. To feel like, I've wow, I really did something because we start with this advantage that other players, if they got here, they wouldn't even know this, right? Yeah. I think that's a really cool thing. Well, it really, it, that's what it comes down to, right, is the is the user experience, the experience of the player and, and really, you know, kind of taking a step back and, and, and from the designer perspective, this is a really challenging space, right? Like it's, oh, yeah. we know it's, 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 it's challenging enough to just come up with a solid board game with, with good mechanics that work and that's balanced and so forth. Like that's a, that's a huge challenge just in, it, in and of itself to be able to do that. And then we're talking about coming up with a game system that is, uh, you know, interchangeable or open enough that can that can have slight modifications and still be good and balanced from campaign to campaign. Mm-hmm. And then we're talking about the ability to tell a great story. <laughs> yeah. You know? And and all those things together, all those different elements, I think is really what makes a great campaign game, which again, I, I don't think we've seen perfected yet. At least I haven't experienced. Um, and, I, and I think there's also a big difference between the types of games, which I don't really care for. I'm definitely more of a, of a Euro resource management heavy gamer. So I don't like the kind of Arkham, you know, uh, horror, those type of games with the cards and, you know, huge board and, and moving the, 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 you know, the, the miniature around. Um and I, and I think these these things are a little bit at, at odds, right? Like I think those more story driven games where there's all this text on on a card um, lend themselves more to story and, and are not as heavily uh, relied upon um, or, or rely upon as heavily on, on mechanisms necessarily. Right. And um, the games that we typically like to enjoy are more um, – rely on the mechanisms and how they work together. And, you know, we often talk about there's you know, a lot of times the theme is, 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 is abstract and we don't, we don't necessarily care about that so much, let alone that type of game telling some type of persistent story. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think for me, it's, it's, you know, that dilettante aspect to us that we have to play so many different games because we have a, a podcast, but we also like playing different games. I, I don't, yeah. I don't have the time at this phase in my life, right? I, you know, when my kids are away in college and, you know, I, I get a, you know, a few calls a week from them, I'm probably going to have more time to, to, to do more of this. And I would love to dive into that. But right now at this phase of life, I don't really have that. So I can't really, I can't really jump into Tainted Grail or Kingdom Death Monster the way I would like to. Mm. Right. To really do a full on thing. Maddie bought me Betrayal Legacy for my birthday last year and Mm -hmm. it has never been played. It's still sitting there unplayed and it kills me because I hear great things about it. And it seems to be exactly the kind of thing that I would like, which is telling a great story while being a tense strategic game. And that sounds like that sounds like catnip for me. But I know that if I start it. I'm going to have to play with the same people that same game 10 times or whatever. And I, I can't, you know, it, it's like, it's like starting that, uh, you know, that series that has been sitting in your Netflix queue for a long time. And you realize I can't start this. I can't start this right now. I don't have the time for it. Right. I got to wait until I got a moment to, to sit down to be able to watch this and digest this. So that's a, that's a, that's a problem. Here's my question for you. What game, would you want to see have a legacy campaign aspect that does not have one? Hmm. That's a great question. I'll go. I'll go for. I'll go first because I've sure. uh, because I've just been thinking about it now. Yep. I will say one thing is I think Food Chain Magnate could have a campaign variety because the Ketchup expansion has seventeen different modules. Yep. I think whoever wins a round of Food Chain Magnate. Uh, will be able to, you know, they're they're currently dominating the space, and 
every other player, all of the competitors, are going to be able to choose one module to add to the to add to the game for the next round because they're like, wow, you know what? We really got crushed on the on the burgers and the and, and the pizza, but you know what? I, I took a trip to Japan. I think sushi is going to be a, the, the next big thing. So we're going to bring in the sushi module, and the modules change based on the previous game state. Hmm. Anyway, uh, just that's one just one possibility, one thing that I was thinking about. You could tell a little bit of a story there. Right? And uh, the other thing I'll say is, is that um, for c- card games, um, my favorite card game of all time is Android Netrunner. Netrunner is just amazing. Unsupported now, so it's dead. But that would have been a great game to have a campaign mode in. To yeah. have the, you know, the, the the corporation wins. What what? How does that change? What, you know, what do they change in terms of if you can change to some degree the makeup of your opponent's deck, and then they have to adjust to that. That I think it could be it could be a fascinating uh, fascinating option. Mm. Any uh, any any thoughts for for you in terms of what you would what you would uh, want to campaign up? Sure. For for me, I, I just looking at. You know, a few of my favorite games, um, you know, The Gallerist, I think, could be really interesting. Ooh. Uh, tell a story, maybe new artwork, new artists um, that follow maybe eras of art, you know, going going through time could be interesting. Wow. You know how uh, you know how in modern art, the value of the art is based on how much of it sold last ra- uh, last round in the yes. game. Maybe yeah. something maybe something like that where you know the artists don't all start out equal because it's based on previous sales that's interesting yeah yeah i think wow. that could be fun um madeira i think could be interesting in some type of campaign mode mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. uh what else could be interesting um on mars could be interesting yeah i mean how would you do that i mean would because do you just build out from where you've already built do do these structures remain? How do you how would you manage that? I'd be fascinating because I was thinking about that about terraforming Mars as well. But yeah, may, maybe it could be something with with the technology, right? Like um, you know, you 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 go to um, a different area of Mars, right? Yeah. In, in, in the campaign mode, you've already built one part, but now you have uh, new technology and maybe some some new capabilities and different things that you could get on the station that you couldn't get before as you, you know, build up the next set of complexes. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. That's really, really interesting. Oh man. Yeah. It's a brave new world, isn't it? I mean, we have so many different ways to play games and so many different ways to access them. We can add more story. We can have them play differently the next time. And it's based on our memory of how we played it the last time. And, and you know, the game can be put away in, in very, very simple ways that when you set the game up the next time, it remembers where we left off and all that sort of stuff. I mean, there's some very interesting things going on out there. Yeah. Oh, cool. I think it's wonderful, Elder. Thank you so much for uh, for for recommending that topic. I, I think it's it's fascinating. There's a lot more to to check out. Um, if if everybody out there, if you guys have some some games you would like to see a legacy version of and have an idea of it, um, hit us up on on Facebook. Hit us up on on Discord and and pitch your legacy idea. And maybe we'll include that. Maybe we'll we'll we'll, we'll take a moment or two to read some of them off in uh, in uh, on a future episode. Hey, if you enjoyed that video, you very well might enjoy the other videos you now see being suggested to you on screen. Also, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could like, share, or subscribe to our Game Brain channel. Thanks so much.